The release of a new and seemingly very different Resident Evil is coming very soon, so we're here to bring you five things you need to know about Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Honestly, if you're a hardcore fan and you've been following, you probably know a lot of this, but consider this a primer for those who haven't quite been keeping up. You might find this game a bit more interesting than you'd think, especially considering upon first look, it seems nothing like any other Resident Evil game. But starting off with number five, let's talk about what you're going to be fighting and encountering. The Baker family seems to be the main focus or the core of the antagonists. I mean, they do seem to be quite the colorful bunch. It's a weird, gross, disgusting Texas Chainsaw Massacre-esque family. But judging from videos and gameplay demos, you can't cause them any harm through traditional weapons. So what exactly is going on here? We don't know. A large majority of the time, you're going to be hiding from these people, although the game doesn't completely rely on a hiding system. Because you're also going to be hiding and also fighting other things, most notably as of right now, these hunter-like creatures that have been talked about called hollow forms, but most notably the extremely grotesque molded. They're not zombies, but they do take the place of them. They're kind of like these weird, gross, alive corpses that the bakers are somehow creating. As the main enemy, apparently they're still going to be used very sparingly. And just looking at them and judging by their movements and just the vibe they give off, they totally remind me of the regenerators from Resident Evil 4. But that's just me. Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> And at number four, what exactly is the gameplay like for Resident Evil 7? Well, the game is played entirely in first person, obviously a bit of a change for the series, but the developers actually look at it as going back to their roots. The game's director has described it as scaling back, or in his exact words, switching from something like macro to micro. The first person perspective is designed to limit vision and create fear. Very similar to how the static camera angles and clunky controls of the original work to create, you know, like the player anxiety and feeling of helplessness, Resident Evil 7's better on a first person camera view does a similar thing. Like I did mention, there is going to be some combat in the game. There are confirmed weapons like pistols, shotguns, flamethrowers, explosives, chainsaws, and melee weapons. Although the game director has stressed that ammunition will be limited and only certain weapons can be used at certain times, and it's just not a gun heavy focused game. You're also gonna be using herbs in traditional Resident Evil fashion, combining items, collecting keys, and solving puzzles to progress and get through this general area. Very interestingly, there are also going to be upgrades that you can spend collectible coins on that you find throughout the world on different combat upgrades, permanent increases in health, and more stuff that we don't know about. Honestly, a Resident Evil game with a sense of progression sounds pretty cool. And at number three, one of the more interesting things about the game and things you can find along the way in your adventure are these VHS tapes. These collectible VHS tapes found in the world can be placed into tape players to trigger short, standalone playable experiences. These are actually one-offs that can be kind of experimental in nature and try different things and can apparently be way scarier and abstract than anything in the main game. I'm really, really excited for these because, you know, the main core gameplay of Resident Evil, while it does look very scary, after a while you're going to see everything in a expect everything and know what's at your disposal, but these VHS tapes thrown in the mix can really just kind of shake things up and terrify you throughout the game consistently. If they're good and consistently awesome, I'm all about that. I like variety in a game. And at number two, you need to know that the game will have a very heavy focus on VR if you can take advantage of it. The same full entire game will be completely playable in VR. The caveat is, it's only for PlayStation VR. The game is a PlayStation VR exclusive for a year after its release. But so far, it doesn't really seem like Capcom has any other plans to port it over for HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. But regardless, I do think it's going to be a make it or break it title for AAA VR experiences. This is the one that can be a true killer app for something like the PSV. VR. Will it be successful? I don't know, but it is one of the first VR games we're seeing on console that doesn't just have a tacked on experience to it, it's actually the full game playable in VR. And apparently judging from some hands-on previews and stuff, it does work pretty well. It also helps that thankfully the game does run at a smooth 60 frames per second on consoles, which is something we get less and less of these days, but it has to be possible for it to be smooth in VR and not make you sick. We're honestly looking forward to the end result. And at number one, let's talk about what this game actually is and where it sits. The game is set in 2017, which is about four years after the events of Resident Evil 6. It takes place in a fictional Louisiana town with lots of swamps and abandoned plantations. You play as men with super generic name, Ethan Winters. He's a supposed random civilian with no special combat skills to speak of or anything. And he's searching for his missing wife named Mia. His search leads him to a rundown old plantation mansion inhabited by the family of the Bakers who I mentioned earlier. And that's where the journey really 
story begins. Apparently, judging from some previews and the way people have hinted about it and who have played the game, there are smart connections to the whole series and the lore, but we're going to have to wait and see what exactly that means and whether or not it really feels good to fans or really makes any damn sense. Because a part of me wonders whether or not Capcom just didn't want to abandon what they had and they were nervous to start fresh and soft reboot the series, but maybe in a way this is a soft reboot. But I'm serious, like if a ceiling blows out and Leon Kennedy like rappels down on a rope, I am not gonna know what to think. I'll be excited, but also I'll feel very weird because tonally, this seems like a very different game. But honestly, that's why I'm the most excited about Resident Evil 7 because I want those questions to be answered. So those are some things we think you need to know before Resident Evil 7 releases. It is one of the first big games of 2017, and there's a lot of anticipation about this, but there's also a lot of uh, weird low expectations from fans who just don't know what to think. And honestly, I hear you. I do want to know what you think in the comments. Let's talk about this stuff. I've been playing Resident Evil since I was a kid, and this is very, very different, but I'm also at the point where I'm down for a change. Are you, or do you feel differently? Let's talk. Let me know anything about Resident Evil down in the comments. I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, at Jake Baldino if you want to talk about it over there. But you guys know the drill by now. Thank you so much for watching. Clicking the like button helps us out a ton and clicking that circle to subscribe if you're new is a good idea because we really put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.